and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I am so excited. I'm gonna be making shampoo bars and the inspiration was Katie over at Royalty Soaps showed this melt and pour, whoops, the glare, melt and pour shampoo bar base. It's called Cindy Pour, Cindy Pour. It's a synthetic melt and pour base for shampoo bars and i was so excited when i saw her video i'm like yes finally because i have been testing for the past gosh more than a year now different shampoo bar recipes uh Sindit bars which is synthetic it has um different ingredients i've tried cold process soap for shampoo bars because I've been asked a lot, do you have shampoo bars? Because they're so convenient uh, and there's no waste, you know, it. it's just, I think shampoo bars are a great concept, but I was not having success with my recipes because of people's different water types. If you have soft water or hard water, you can make your hair feel kind of tacky or if you have, you know, oily hair or dry hair. I just, there's so many variables that go into shampoo. Um, I didn't find anything that I was happy with marketing, so I haven't brought any of those test batches to you all here on YouTube because they all kind of just fell flat, the testing period. The husband would like it and the girlfriends wouldn't like it. I, So anyway, I just kind of in my mind relegated it into the, you know what, I just don't do shampoo bars. And then I saw Katie Carson do a review on this melt and pour base and I'm like, that's it, I'm gonna try it. <laughs> so I haven't made any yet. We're gonna do this for the first time together. Um, I haven't even picked out my fragrances. I wanna do a couple of fragrances, a couple of colors, cause it's melt and pour, super easy, okay? I'm really looking forward to this. And then I'll do a lather test at the end. We'll do some different scents, different colors. We'll do a lather test. We're gonna do it all. I'm just so excited, can you tell? <laughs> Thank you, Katie, for doing that review. I never would have known this product exi existed if she hadn't done that. So anyway, I'm anxious to get in here and let's give it a try. Let's make some shampoo bars. Okay, we're back and ready to get measuring out our shampoo Cindapore melt and pour base here. I'm so excited. Um, so these are the little molds that I'm going to use and they have a lip on them so it makes like a little 3D puck like a stone. It's very smooth and I just love the shape of these. They are a little over two ounces each less. The two percent of my fragrance for this first batch I'm going to do strawberry cheesecake. It smells so good and I'll put in just a touch of my fairy tale pink mica to go with the strawberry cheesecake scent. And I got a bunch of these molds. I got these on Amazon. I'll leave a link down below. They are just such a nice little comfortable size. I got them thinking about conditioning bars and I thought, well, let's do the shampoo in there too. So uh, conditioning is another video, another time. I'm still working on that. <laughs> but yeah, let's do two of these. So I'm gonna do 22 ounces in here and then that'll bump, bump this up to uh, 0.4. So anyway, let's get this measured. Sorry, my scale went off while I was talking. I really love my new scale. If you saw my equipment video, I talked about getting a new scale. I love this scale, except it doesn't stay on for a long time. And so when I tear it out, it'll, you know, it goes dormant after I think a minute or two. And I wish it stayed on a little longer. That's my only complaint with this scale. Other than that, I really love it. So, all right, let's get measuring here. We're gonna do 22 ounces and this is very soft um, and so I looked up I got my melt and pour here from bulk apothecary is where I got it and the chemistry store also carries it um, and they had a lot of good information on their website that uh, although it is soft right now, they say after you melt it and then it hardens, it hardens up more than this. Because I was thinking, gosh, this is really soft. But apparently there is a reaction that will firm it up even more after you've melted it. So I'm thankful for that. Let's get it in here. So some of the beautiful things about this melt and pour, I just pulled off the internet here. The description, it is a neutral pH. So it's wonderful for hair and scalp. It's a pH of about five or five to six. So that is perfect for hair and scalp. Uh, it is dermatologically tested. So you know it's safe for skin and all the good stuff. It's 100% soap free. It's suitable for sensitive skin, they say. 
Um, it has a high foaming lather. It's supposed to feel very luxurious. And again, we'll do the lather test at the end and see if that is true. This is kind of full in here. Maybe I should be doing a smaller container. I bet when this melts, it'll fit in there. All right, so let's see. It's also, this is a vegan product. If you are a vegan, this is right up your alley. Uh, and it is biodegradable. So that is really awesome. I love all of those things about this product. So we're almost up to 22 ounces here, a little bit more. And uh, it's supposed to have a very, you know, good melting point, melt very quickly, I think. So I will do this in small bursts in the microwave. If you hate the microwave, and I know a lot of people really hate microwaves, you could definitely do this in a double boiler. But the instructions on the website said microwave, so that's what I'm doing today. So almost up there. Let's get a little more. Oh gosh, we're so close. <laughs> All right, 22 ounces. So I'm gonna do a little 30 second bursts, get this melted down, and then we will add in 0.4 ounce of fragrance and a little coloring. All right, let me get this melted. All right, I just wanted to give you an update. This has been um, two minutes total in 30 second bursts and we're almost melted and I don't wanna overheat it. So I'm gonna stir this a little bit and see if those last chunks will go ahead and melt. But uh, pretty quick, this is uh, such a low tech project. I'm, <laughs> I'm just blown away excited and I'm really hoping that the final product is as good as the website says it is. I'm pretty excited. I think it's gonna be great. So after I get these poured, I'm gonna let them sit overnight before I unmold. Just, you know, why not? I'm not gonna rush it. And then uh, I will actually test it before I sell this in my shop. I'm going to have this in my shower and test it, but I'll do a lather test with you guys, just with my hands. I'm not gonna bring you in the shower with me because, you know, that's not my style. <laughs> but almost there. It's nice and warm, so I'm gonna just let this sort of finish melting here. We're coming along. It didn't have any um, cautions on overheating, but I know with melt and pour soaps, it's not good to overheat them. Uh, it can cause you trouble on the other end when they're set up. It can cause lead to sweating. Now this product did have a warning that said because of the high glycerin content that it can sweat. So I'll be keeping an eye on that also. Um, but you know, that's just part of melt and pour life. And uh, it's not bad, it doesn't mean anything's wrong with it, it just means there's a lot of good moisture in there. So, hey, that's not a bad thing. All right, it's all melted and now it's time for our fragrance. Let me get the scale tore out, tear out. <laughs> It's a funny word. Okay, and 0.4 ounces, so a little less than half an ounce of fragrance is going in here. All right, wonderful. And then I'm gonna add a little color in here. Uh, I don't want to add a lot, but I just thought a little color would kind of represent that fragrance because it smells so nice. So, literally gonna just take, this is my baby spoon, this is a very small spoon, and I'm just gonna take the tip of it. And this is a skin safe, skin friendly mica. You wanna make sure you have a skin safe mica or colorant when you're doing anything that's gonna be on your scalp because that is skin. So, that's just something to watch out for. So just a teeny bit and let's see what this gets us. So uh, again, the website did say that as it melts, it's clear, but when it firms up again, it will go back to opaque, which means that you, it's not clear. <laughs> it's a more solid color. That's what opaque means. I don't think I put enough in there. I'm afraid it won't really show. Let me just keep stirring, make sure it's all melted. All right, that looks beautiful to me. It's very light. I think it'll be very light when it cools, but I'm happy with that. I think, isn't that pretty? 
So let's get these poured. Now, theoretically, I should have two, um, two pans full here. We shall see. Uh, to do a lather test for you. I had a little half bar on the first uh, strawberry cheesecake, the first batch I poured, I only did 22 ounces of the melt and pour and it wasn't quite enough to fill all of them. So I ended up doing 23 and a half ounces for the rest and that filled my little molds up really well. So anyway, uh, here it is, it smells so good and look how light that color came out. So if you want a darker color, you'd need more mica than I put in there, but oh my word, I'm so excited to try this. And I'm gonna send it upstairs <laughs> to the bathroom for my husband and I to try. So I wanted to do a lather test before I bring this upstairs, this little half bar for us. So let's give it a whirl here. It does feel very smooth and creamy in your hand and the lather starts building up immediately. Wow, I mean, right away. So that, oh my goodness, that's a really thick, you can't really see how thick it is, but it makes a layer on my hand like immediately. And that's just a couple of turns in my hand. This is a very creamy lather. Um, the uh, website for the Sin de Pour says it's a luxurious lather, and I would agree, it really is. It's very soft feeling. Katie Carson described it as a lotion-like feel, and it does. It has a nice feel, but it also rinses really nice, too. Um, it rinses very completely. I think that's great. You might not even need a conditioner with this, but conditioners are another time. This is fabulous. It smells great. So I am going to let the rest of these just wait. Uh, we'll uh, come back and unmold, but I wanted to do that lather test. Oh my, this is fun. I cannot wait to use this and I will report back and say how I liked it on my hair. But <laughs> anyway, here's the lather test in water. It lathers very quickly and nice bubbles. I have a feeling this is going to be wonderful on hair and it does feel very gentle on my skin. I don't have sensitive skin, but this just really does feel gentle. So anyway, happy with the lather. All right, I had some leftover of the soap batter. Uh, so I made some little travel size bars that I'm gonna pack in a tin which will be airline friendly and travel friendly. And then these I'm gonna wrap in eco paper. I'll show you all of that when I get there, but isn't this just the cutest? I was thinking about how I'm gonna wrap these and I realized that I wanted to make some in a tin. So aren't those beautiful? 
So cute. I'm loving it. Okay, and I just want to report that I did go up and take a shower and wash my hair. I have wet hair right now and it is wonderful. I really enjoyed using my shampoo bar. It was fabulous. It lathered so easily and rinsed really nice. So just the whole experience was a good one. So love, love, love. So there we go with the little travel size ones. So these are going to be a little over one ounce. These are like three ounces, 2.8 to three ounces. But these ones will come in a tin, which I think is great for traveling. All right, let's wrap the little travel size bars in the tins. These are two ounce tins for one and a half ounce bars. That's what fits. And I'm going to use little craft muffin liners to uh, sort of be the padding in there. So here's how I do it. It's, it's too shallow, right? Or not too shallow. The circumference is too small right now. So you just put it down and kind of open up the bottom and take your little shampoo bar there, center it, and then when you poke it in the tin, it's the right circumference. And then I have my labels here that I print out. These labels are from onlinelabels.com and I use their Maestro label designer to design these labels. This is a two inch circle, which is what I'm using today. And that fits on the top of these tins really nicely, I think. So we'll get that all lit it up here. And then we'll get the label, which has the name of the fragrance, the ingredients, the weight, all the essential info is on there. And there we go, little travel size bar ready to go. It's time to wrap the bigger bars, the 2.8 to 3 ounce bars. And I have just, these are natural unbleached coffee filters that I think make a fabulous eco-friendly wrapping option for soaps, round soap bars. They're just great. And so anyway, and you can smell through them. It's really nice. So here is how I'm going to put them with the uh, flat side up for the labeling. It'll be a little easier. And this is just one inch craft paper tape that help hold it together. The label sticking is enough, but I think this looks pretty. So I'm gonna add this on there also, cause you know, looking pretty is good. So you just put this in the middle and I just start to gather the folds and go in a circle and gather them up like this, kind of pleating it as I go. And I hold it, there you go. And now I'm going to take my paper tape. I'm not sure exactly how much I'll need, so I just kind of run it out here. Okay. There, circle the paper tape around and get one of my labels. And again, these are the two inch labels from onlinelabels.com. Put this on there. And there you go. And I just think that's a really cute way to wrap these and it's all eco-friendly to go along with the soap bar. So I got some soaps to wrap. <laughs> 